This is part three of my infected knee tutorial going in depth about how I pre-painted the appliance. Now you could just apply the silicon piece as is and then color it with skin illustrator or whatnot, but with really juicy wounds I prefer to pre-paint it with silicon as it leaves a really lovely glossy texture over everything and you can get very separate layers that completely cure before the next one is laid on top for ultimate control over the end look. I started with a translucent pink colour, which I mixed up from my primary coloured silicon pigments, mixing it into a small drop of part A and part B Platzel Gelatin Silicon. You can also paint with silicons such as Platzel 7315 silicon or even silicon caulking, like the stuff that plumbers use. I'm just using Platzel Gel 10 so that it's just one product for everything. I also added a small amount of naphtha, which is lighter fluid and is known as shellite in Australia. This will thin out the mixture so it's not so thick and gelish while painting. The naphtha does pack a punch, so you need to wear a respirator while doing this or you'll start to feel pretty lousy pretty fast. It is dangerous stuff. I painted the initial pink coat over the edges of the wound where it shows irritation onto the skin. I painted it into the suture holes and then coated the inside of the wound. I used a red sipple sponge to try to break up the colour on that area that is going to be the skin graft and this also helps it to look more matte and textured, so more like skin rather than a glossy, smooth internal structure. I used a heat gun on low heat and low air in between each step so that the silicon would cure in a couple of minutes rather than it taking 20 to 30 minutes between layers. Once this was cured, I mixed up another batch of silicon and naphtha, this time with a flesh tone added to it. I used a stipple sponge to break up this colour over the skin graft area and again to give it a matte finish and a slight texture. Next I did some heavier, more opaque areas of skin tone and then I added back some of that pink as the original reference image does have a lot of pink in that area. And again I brushed it on and then used a sponge to blend it out. Now that I'm happy with those layers, I move on to the meaty, bloody part underneath the skin graft area. I mixed up a small amount of silicon and naphtha again, and this blood tone silicon pigment is a product by Smooth On, which I really like. I put this into the bottom of the knee replacement area, down into the split open wound area, and then up around the right edge of the wound. For the pus, I started with a fairly opaque yellow-brown. I made this colour by mixing yellow, white, brown and flesh tone. I copied where the pus was in my reference photo. I again used a sponge and then also a cotton tip to try to break it up and make it sit a bit more naturally. Next I mixed up a slightly more brown version of this colour and applied that with a brush and a sponge. Then I felt this took away too much of the blood red and they'd probably be all mixed up together in a real wound, so I did another layer of blood red amongst the pus. Then I added some more of the opaque yellow. This time it had thickened and started to kick, so it added quite an interesting texture. I also added the brown silicon on top again and then some more of the blood red on top of that. I blended it all together with a brush that had naphtha on it just to help soften it all. Next I mixed up a more transparent whiter pus colour and I put that over everything. I did this in two layers. I added a drop of brown into this colour and then placed that in the deepest parts and in the corners just to add a bit more dimension and depth. After I let that cure, the silicon painting was done. 
I usually only paint the silicon inside the wound. In this one I did go a little bit over the wound edge to make it pink and then I later matched the skin tone after it was applied using alcohol activated colors. The one downside that I've noticed when pre-painting with silicon is that because I'm applying the silicon on top of cat plastic rather than putting silicon on top of silicon, which is what normally happens when you're painting with silicon, it doesn't fully bond because of that cat plastic layer in between, whereas silicon on silicon makes a really strong bond. So this means if I'm wearing latex or plastic gloves and I press onto my silicon painted layer too hard, it can actually stick to my gloves and come off my piece completely, revealing that base flesh toned silicon underneath. So here's a minor version of what I'm talking about from this makeup. So a solution to this to make it a bit of a tougher paint job that would withstand a lot of grabbing, which is what I like to do with my silicon prosthetics, would be to dissolve off the cat plastic layer from the center of the wound before you apply the silicon paint, and then it can fully bond to the silicon underneath it. Now to finish off the pre-paint, I added real medical sutures and surgical staples, which I found on eBay. I figured if we spent this much time trying to make it look realistic, we may as well go all out on having the actual surgical elements in it as well. You can probably get away with using black cotton and thread or fishing wire and normal staples, but I wanted this to be 100% believable and accurate. I started with the surgical staples, which had instructions on how to use it on the pack. I did the top and bottom of the wound, following the reference photo as my guide. Originally I was going to suture the whole thing and that's why I sculpted in the suture pinches into this, but after trying it out the first time with sutures, I decided I wanted to try with staples instead. I looked on YouTube for different ways to stitch up wounds and I picked a basic, easy technique to copy. I bought a student suture kit on eBay, so I had the scissors, scalpel, tissue forceps and needle holder with the serrated jaw. I threaded the needle through the holes that I had sculpted and then tied it off and cut it. I also embedded a few stitches into the pus and into the wound, just like in the reference photo, threading it through the silicon and using Telus's adhesive to help stick bits down. Now I have a beautifully painted appliance ready to be applied and this will greatly reduce the application time as all I need to do now is match the skin tone and add a little bit of blood. Thanks for watching, I will upload the last application video soon and put a link to it here when it is up. If you would like to be alerted to when I do upload new videos, you can subscribe to my channel here.